All right, just give me a virtual thumbs up if you guys can see the screen, because we have the Gemara up. Thank you, Myrna. Hazak Baruch. Okay. So let's introduce this topic, okay? This topic is the topic of waiting 24 hours. What, right, what, how, where do we get 24 hours from? What does 24 hours help? Um, what sort of laws can we, uh, you know, can we, excuse me, ascertain from this? What do we, where do we get it from? So this is what we're going to see. We're going to be seeing this, uh, the law of 24 hours. And from the law of 24 hours, we're going to be able to deduce, uh, you know, a couple of different, uh, different laws. What is the law of 24 hours called? It's called Din Noten Ta'am. Leaf gum. I'm highlighting it. It gives over a, a taste that is pagum. Literally speaking, the, the word pagum means uh, damaged. A pigima, there's like a little hole in, in something. Or there's, it's, uh, what, how I like to refer to it for this uh, discussion is negative taste. The tam leaf gum means it's negative taste. And we're going to see that the Torah really only forbade what we call positive taste, meaning let's take take about it. Let's take an example of meat and milk together. So when we want, when the Torah wanted to make sure that we never ever tasted meat and milk together, the Torah wanted the rabbis explained to us that it means positive milk taste and positive meat taste together. What what I mean by positive taste that you're actually getting the taste that you're feeling it. Meaning if something that's putrid or something that's disgusting. It doesn't have the law of taste at all. It's something that's uh, insignificant. We don't even, we're not even machshivit. So the actual, the actual phrase of noten ta'am lif gam, giving over ta'am, noten, giving over ta'am, a taste, lif gam, that is negative. So now we're going to have to decide what constitutes a negative taste and what can I do with those halachot. So let's read the first source together. And we're going to have to go slow, it, but once we get the first source together, even if that's what we do today, then it's going to it's gonna sink in. So let's read together. This is from the Gemara Masechet Avodah Zarah, Daf Ayin He Amud Bet, 75b. Ifligu Tana'e benoten ta'am lifgam imutar o asur. The rabbis, the Tana'im, ifligu, right? Palig means they were split. They had an argument. If ligu tana eben oten tam lifgam, they had an argument when it came to giving over negative taste. Im mutar o asur, if this was allowed or if it was forbidden. Upasku keman deshare, the rabbis ruled and they finally said that it was allowed. Negative taste in your pots is considered allowed. Okay, so the first line of the Gemara, we have a machloket tanaim where we say that is negative taste allowed or forbidden? And we have the ruling that the Gemara says, Pasku kimandashare, they said that it was allowed. That's not going to be that simple. Let's see. Let's keep reading. Ve'amrinan Gemara, it says in the Gemara, Ulman de'amar noten tam livgam mutar. And according to those opinions who say that noten tam livgam is mutar, that negative taste is allowed, gi'ule goyim de'asar rahamana. And we said, so according to those who say that noten tam livgam is allowed, gi'ule goyim, de asar rahamana. Hechi mishkahade, what does gi'ule goyim mean? What is it, what is, what is, uh, what word do you, that sounds familiar when I say gi'ule? Anybody have a thought? Gi'ule lehag'il. We'll make it e interesting. We just had it in Pesach. Okay, so it's from the short. This is the shortest. The Hagail means to purge. Hagala. When we say here Giole Goim, we want to say the fact that I have to purge the weapons or the Kelim of Goim when I destroy their nation, which is the 
which is the source of all of us, how we have to actually do Hagalah and kosher, the utensils that we get from a non-Jew. The Asara Hamana, Why is that why the, the Torah made it forbidden for us to take the vessels of the Goyim unless we did Hagalah? How does that how does that work? Meaning you could say that it's a negative taste. So, meaning, I, if I took, let's say, where where is the context of this, in to, of, of, let's say, a person, um, make sure, where does, where do we see that the, uh, in, in the war with Midian, right, what's the war with Midian? We see that Moshe Rabbeinu is actually asks Hashem and says, this war with Midian, what do I, what do we do with the spoils? And Hashem says, you got to do two things. You got to dip it in a mikveh and you got to purge the stuff. So why do I have to purge the stuff? Because they're saying you want to take the taste out of the, let's say the fork of the, the, the goy's fork. I have to take it out. So this came out saying, well, wait a second. You just said that negative taste is okay. They weren't. They were just fighting a war. They weren't using it for steak. So definitely, it wait, they waited twenty four hours. So why do I have to purge the utensils of a goy that were used? Why can't I just rely on negative taste and say whatever taste it, that's locked into the non Jews utensil from their fork or from the you know that they used for pig and whatnot? Just say no ten town live gum. Just say that it's a negative taste. Rabbi Hiya Bere de Rav Huna comes and answers and says, Lo asra ha Torah ela kedera bat yoma. De lo no ten ta'am lif gamhu. Say, no, you're right. The Torah only forbade a pot that was used within 24 hours. That's called bat yoma. Bat yoma means within the day. Was used within the day, within the 24 hours. If the non-Jew used their fork for pork within 24 hours, that's when it would made it asur. So, so in essence, Rabbi Haya is accepting this question of the Gemara and saying, "Wait a second! I thought you just said above. Let's go. Let's go through the summary. We just said that the rabbis had a the, the rabbis fought about whether or not negative taste was allowed or forbidden, and they ruled that negative taste was allowed." But then the Gemara comes and says, if that's the case, according to those who said that it was allowed, how do they explain the case of when Moshe Rabbeinu in the uh, in the fight with uh, with uh, with Midian says that Hashem tells him, no, you could take all of the stuff from Midian, but you got to kosher them, you got to purge it. Why do I have to purge it? I shouldn't purge it. Let me just uh, let's just wait twenty four hours, uh, or or and then it'll be good. It'll be a negative taste. I shouldn't have to. So then Rabbi Hayah basically says, you're right. Lo asra ha-Torah ela kedera bat yoma. The Torah only forbade a pot that was used within 24 hours. De lo no ten tam liv gamhi. It does not give off a negative taste. Now he says, uparich. The Gemara says, wait a second. We don't accept that answer either. Mikan ve'elach lishtere. That means that's all I have to do is wait. All I have to do is wait 24 hours and every pot is going to be allowed. Because once it becomes negative, it's good. And Rashi even adds, interject, I put this Rashi here. Rashi says, what does that mean? And Rashi says, Even in the first place, as a first option, I'm allowed to just wait 24 hours and then use the fork of the goy that he used for something non-kosher? So the Gemara then says, Umshane gezera she'ena bat yoma atu bat yoma. We're making a gezera on all, a gezera a decree on all pots that were not used within 24 hours, meaning they were left alone for a long time, atu bat yoma, from the concept of bat yoma, to make sure that we never ever confuse a pot that is bat yoma to a pot that is not bat yoma. So whether or not you use the pot within 24 hours or not within 24 hours, we say that the chatehila, you're not allowed to use something that was not that was used for a goy, and you must purge it. 
Ah, what about no ten tam leaf gum? As we said, no, there's a gezera. We're worried that you're going to use the part that was, we're going to make a gezera on all parts, even ones that weren't used within 24 hours, from all parts that were used within 24 hours, lest a person swap them out. So it's a gezera. And therefore, even though the rabbis said that negative taste is allowed, and even though it seems that even according to those who said negative taste would be allowed, what would you do with the reason why the, the Torah said that you have to do Hagalah on them? Rabbi Hayya gave the answer and said, no, the Torah only wanted you to do Hagalah on them if they are Ben Yomo. We said, really? Even the Chatechila? And then the Gemara said, no, not the Chatechila. Even the Chatechila. We said, even if it's not Bat uh, Yomah, even if it's not, it hasn't been used within 24 hours, meaning you used the pot a week ago, you cannot use it for the, because of the negative taste that is that is in it. So we definitely need to unpack this source because there's a lot here. Let's start with just questions, basic questions on the understanding. I want to make sure that we understand the sugya and understand where we're going uh you know where we're going. So, uh, if anybody has any questions, any clarifications, I want to hear it uh, hear it now because it's important that we get this source solid before we move on to anything. Anybody? Okay. Rabbi, this only pertains to metal or for glass as well? So this would only be things that absorb, so that's metal. Okay, fine. Okay, so let's, if there aren't any questions, so I'm hoping everybody understands the sugya. I'm banking on you guys. So let's go to source number two. This is the most important source, and, and this is really where people get very, very, very confused with this 24-hour rule. And this Maran is really one that you can take to the bank. We'll go over it slowly, very slowly. And as we go through it, you'll you'll understand it. Ready? So this is Maran Yore de Asiman Sadigimal Seif Aleph 93.1. Kedera shebishel ba basar lo yevashel ba halav. A pot that you cooked meat in, you may not cook dairy in the pot. Okay, so now what would be your obvious question at this point to ask now that we introduced the the, the topic of netina tam leaf gum, negative taste? Anybody know what I'm looking for? So we said, but this this should prove, you should say, well, what about waiting 24 hours? If I have a pot and I cook meat in it, why can't I just wait 24 hours, the taste becomes negative, and then cook dairy in it? What this line teaches you is that the entire concept of noten tam lif gam is bedi avad. Bedi avad means after the fact, not in as a first choice, not as a first option. And B'diavad means after you already made, did an action. So the only way that somebody would be able to cook dairy in a meat pot is only by accident. And even by accident, we have a lot of questions that we need to ask you in order to save the food. So what this is telling you is, You made meat in a, in a pot. Black on white. You cannot cook milk in it. Let's say a person made a mistake and did cook meat inside a milk pot within 24 hours of using the pot. Asur benoten tam. It's asur, the food you're going to have to throw out. Now you're going to have to make sure that there is at least 60 parts of the if there's, you have to make sure that there, when is it going to be totally asur? When there's less than 60 times the meat that you cooked in the dairy pot, let's say as an example, than the dairy that you cooked in the in that pot beforehand within the 24 hours, which most of the time if you cook something normally, dairy is going to be asur. 
And if you cooked anything of any substance in the, uh, you know, in, in, in the meat, it'll also, it'll help you, but still, usually it's not 60 times, uh, which the Rama brings down here. But again, that's, that's beyond that scope. But if you did wait more than Eid Le'et, means time to time, which means 24 hours. This is very important. If, let's say, a person, I took a dairy pot out of my cabinet by accident and cooked the kibbeh mushroom in it. But this pot was not used in a week. Since it's negative taste, the food is allowed. The 24 hours helps you to save the food. But look at the underline. The, the pot that you now have is an unkosher pot and may not be used until you do hagala. So if I took the noten tam gum and I said, look, I now I learned it's only if there's a mistake. Even when there's a mistake, not everything is allowed. If there's a mistake and you made it within 24 hours, you're throwing everything out. You're throwing the food out and you have to kosher the pot. If you made it outside of 24 hours, now the food is still kosher, but your pot is always not kosher. And you must kosher the pot again before you use it for anything. It doesn't like go back to dairy, etc. Not even parv, we don't let you use it for. The pot is asur until you do hagala. You got to just burn this, you re read and reread this Sa'if multiple times. Um, let me take questions or comments from the crowd. Anything, guys? Is it clear? You want to just give me a thumbs up if it's clear? Something? No? Okay, thank you, Rini. God bless. Okay, no questions on this? Everything's clear? Thank you, Gina, for the thumbs up. Okay, everything's clear? Okay. Good, we got the small crew today. All right. So let's go down. So now, the Shach wants to tell you, which is a very important cloud, as I mentioned, which I wanted to highlight, that if a person made a mistake, you really need to make, let's say, within Ben Yomo, meaning they took they took um, a pot out of the cabinet that was dairy, and they cooked the kibbeh mushroom. Let's just say the pot that they took, they really, they really made a mistake, and the pot that they took, they had just used yesterday, let's say 10 hours ago. Last night, they cooked the calzones in the pot, they rinsed, they washed the pot. You woke up early in the morning, you weren't paying attention. You took the calzones pot, you threw your kibbeh in. So now this pot you used within 24 hours. Based on what we said, you got to you gotta throw everything out. There's one way out. The one way out is that you'd have to have 60 times the amount of meat than the amount of dairy that you cooked previously. How is that possible in a pot? There's no way that a pot can hold 60 times its walls, meaning... Picture an empty pot in your mind. Now I cook dairy in it. Dairy taste goes into the pot. Now the diameter and the you know, how much milk is in the pot, as much as the, let's say the maximum it could be, is however much dairy the walls of the pot can hold. So if I made the accident, right, I make the ultimate mistake, and now I'm cooking my kibbeh balls inside the pot that I just used two hours ago for calzones, how much dairy is getting into the meat? Well, the volume of the entire walls of the pot. There's no such thing as a pot that can hold 60 times what it's made out of. So that's what the Shach stresses. He says as follows, In many places, it's very clear. It's virtually impossible. And by the way, that's the halacha that we excuse me, that we follow, is that it's almost impossible for you to say, well, Rabbi, don't worry, even though I had just used the calzones pot uh, six hours ago, and now I cooked kibbeh mushroom in it, there was 60 times the amount of kibbeh that were in the, that, that, than my pot. Well, come on. 
How big is your pot? It can't be. How would it even look? It was Maran, even though it's an impossibility, Maran just had to say it. Because if it was possible to make a to make a a, a a vessel that was that large, yet still strong, then it would be okay. Actually, if you look in the Bet Yosef, it talks about what such a such a vessel would look like. So such a vessel would look like is picture a U, the letter U, right? The letter U, picture a, a, a an uppercase U, but now the bottom part of the U, right? A U is two two lines that are upright and one li line at the bottom. Imagine if the line at the bottom was an entire line of, let's say, that you're writing. Picture, let's say, lined paper, and you just put two lines, uh, the U was a, an elongated U. The bottom was very long, and then up. Imagine your pot looked like that, where it's very thin. Thin walls, thin bottom, but the bottom is huge. It goes almost like across your table. Then maybe you could say that the pot could hold 60, but it's no pots look like that. Okay? Um, and again, he... Uh, the Shachman says, In a man, Mishkaha, the Famim, she had Roha, the Kederagado, Koka, she has Zig Maim, she was Shim Kenegdo, Kigotchen Hushta, Dak, Verehava, Gedola, as we just said. But that, that's what says in the Bet Yosef. The, the Shach brings it down. But again, we don't have that. Umikoma Kom, in any event, Had Tsarik the Shaer, Neged Kola Kederahino, the Kederaya Shana, the Delayad Aina, and Kamabala. Now, the Shach tells us another very important thing in this case. Very good, Rabbi. You told us that. You not, not so far summary. What is natlap? Natlap stands for noten tam lifgam, giving a negative taste. What makes taste negative? Waiting what's called me'et le'et. Et le'et is 24 hours from, from this time today to, to the same time tomorrow. That's what it means me'et le'et. Once I wait 24 hours, it makes all of the all of the taste sour. And the rabbis did not worry about sour taste mixing together to count it as, oh, well, you tasted what meat and milk taste like together. That's only in fresh taste. Sour taste is not a is not a thing. It's not that, that, that that's, doesn't count that you ate meat and milk together, even experience the taste. Is this the chatechila or is this bidiyavad? We said it's only bidiyavad. Gezera from a pot that is en abatyomo to batyomo. Right, what does batyomo mean? Batyoma. Batyoma means used within 24 hours. And eno batyoma is not used within 24 hours. So we protected the pots. We protected ourselves and we said we're being very careful and we want to make a gezera onto all pots that were not used within 24 hours, meaning they were used past 24 hours, like a week ago, from pots that we have that we may have used within 24 hours. Then we said that if a guy, so it's only bidiyavad, that's why you need meat and dairy dishes. Because I can't just say, cook meat in a pot, wait 24 hours, cook dairy. Uh-uh, NG. Never allowed. Once a pot is meat, it's meat. Once a pot is dairy, it's dairy. Ah, so why do I have to know that if it's l'chatechila or bidiyavad? Because if you made an accident, by accident you cooked in a pot that was like that, then... It's going to be, the food could be allowed. Ah, even then, when is the food allowed? Only if you waited the 24 hours. So if I, by accident, took the dairy pot out of the out of the cabinet, and I cooked my kibbeh bowls, but the last time I used that dairy pot for dairy, it was two weeks ago. The food is kosher, but you always still need to kosher the pot. Then if, let's say, I made the ultimate mistake, I took a pot that I had just used six hours ago for dairy, and I cooked the meat, you got to throw the food out, and... The pot needs to be kosher. Maran just says, by the way, if you have 60 times the meat food against the pot, it can be batel. Shach is teaching us it's almost impossible to have that. And he gave us, even as I quoted in the Beit Yosef, the design of a pot that might look like that, but no pots look like that nowadays. Now, when do I have to... I gave you the measurement. That's the summary of the class. We'll do this last point. This number two. However... Even, let's say I theoretically could get 60 times the meat against the entire pot. 
The reason why that's a problem is because I'm taking the entire pot. When do I have to take the entire pot? When it's an old pot. Because we don't know how many times you've used... I, if I take an old pot, I've used this, I don't know, hundreds of times for dairy. How much dairy taste is locked in? I don't know. So I have to assume that it's filled the entire pot after so many uses with dairy taste. If it was, an, if it was a new pot, Kedera Hadasha... You only have to go by how much dairy you cooked in the pot. So if I know that I only cooked two small calsonises, calsoni, I guess, I don't know, right? Then I can, then there is a possibility to get 60, but it's only in a new pot. So it's a very rare case. But I just wanted to put that in so that you understand the concept of how the dairy pots are constantly sucking in dairy taste and our meat pots are constantly sucking in meat, meat taste. You could have a pot in your kitchen that's 20 years old. You've been co cooking the kibbeh mushroom in it for 20 years. So if you ever make a mistake, we have to assume that the entire pot is infused with meat. And therefore, that's why you have to go 60 against the entire pot. Okay, let's take any questions. Any questions? I think we did a good summary. And, be, and um, I think we did okay. Anything, guys. Last call. Anything? Okay. Thank you so much, guys, for coming. I uh, hope you got something out of the class. And, um, okay, we'll continue this topic next week. Thank you. Thank you. Can you please send out thank a recording? You. Sorry, what did you say, uh, Dad? I need a recording. I have to hear it again. Okay, sure. No problem. Uh, I'll do it. Thank you. You got it.